You're listening to Funny Peculiar with Jeff Downs. Welcome to another episode of the Funny and Peculiar podcast uh, with me, Jeff Downs. Um, thank you again for sharing and downloading. Um, I've got a great guest with me this week, and I say that this every week. Um, and we're on the move here because we're in the train station, and it's hello to Elliot, but better known as Poppycock. Hello, hi. How, how, you, for how are you? Very welcome. And um, and uh, I've just uh, we're in Ma- Manchester Piccadilly station, and this is very much you at the moment because you're constantly touring. You, you, you're, you're doing various gigs all the time. So where are you today? Uh, so today I'm at Via in Manchester. Tomorrow I'm in Brighton. Sunday I'm in London. So I'm sort of just like a rash. I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you don't stop, and because and, and let's just do a shout out for your Instagram account because. You're on Instagram a lot, aren't you? Yeah. And that's got and Facebook. So, well, how can uh, listeners find you on? Instagram? So on Instagram, it's at it's Poppycock because um, there's someone with that already has Poppycock. Has and there's that it's underscore. Oh no, it's just it's it's and then Poppycock. Poppycock. Right, yeah, okay. as in it's me. Um, <laughs> and then on Facebook, if you just search Poppycock, she's there. I have no idea how Twitter works though. Fine. So. Well, <laughs> well, apparently Twitter have reached maximum peak tweet. Which means a bit like the oil's running out. So apparently uh, they've lo- they're starting to lose like millions of tweets. I just so. don't get it. I know. I think it's too. Co- I think pictures. Instagram's popular, especially for queens mm. and for performers, because it's pictorial. We can see yeah. your brilliant, wonderful outfit, outfits, and we'll get into your outfits, your look, and how Poppy came about. So, so yeah. Again, you're on the move, immensely busy. So, where actually are you based? You're based in. I'm based in London. Are you in London? Are you from London originally? No, I'm from Winchester originally. Okay. So I South South, um, right. and then I moved to London about too long ago. Too long ago. <laughs> and, and so, how did Poppy come about? How did you start to dip your toe into this um, the world of drag? So, I mean, so I trained in theatre. Okay. So and where did you train? Uh, so I trained at the Erdang Academy in London. Okay. For three years. I've been dancing since I was ten. Um, so it, I was already performing, and then I've always loved like making things. And okay. I was. <laughs> When I'm stressed, I make things. Okay. And so when I was getting really stressed uh, after I graduated, I was just making things and throwing them away. Right, uh, okay. I, had, I was just constantly making and things. And what sort of things you make? Costumes? Like, like, pro- like um, I'd make lots of hair things. i just make literally anything right. just to like do something. Mm-hmm. And um, it just, so anyway, I ended up buying wigs because I could do the wig and then okay. wash it out and do it again so I wasn't throwing anything away. Okay. And I was like, oh, well, this is fun. And then, like, I've always loved drawing, which sort of translates into doing my face. Okay. And then yeah. it's sort of like all the things I already do in my life sort of came together. And I was like, oh. It. And that, that it's was a, a. It's a woman. Uh, it's, it's suddenly <laughs> this, this gorgeous woman, and, and I've seen you, privileged and honoured to perform with you as well. And, and you have a wonderful voice, and that's something I just don't have, and I admire anybody to sing. And, and I've watched a clip, so do watch her clips on. Uh, Instagram, some wonderful clips of you singing various uh, gigs. But let's go back to w- w- when you were ten and you were so you were dancing. Uh, mm. so, uh, and was this tap? Was this ba- was this all? Uh, it started as ballet step. and then okay. it was tap, jazz. I mean, I, I did dabble in street dance, but I'm just not cool. So okay. <laughs> that didn't go. That didn't last very long. So it wasn't. Um, and also street dance, you need another thirty people. Seems to yeah, be. Yeah, uh, I just, I just, I, d- d- I mean, once you take a look at me on Instagram, you'll realise this is not. She's, she's like a showgirl. She can. <laughs> so you were. So this was just something. That, was there anybody in your family that would dance, or was there someone on television? You went. That's what I want to do. Um, I don't know actually. Um, I sound really. And this was some might sound a bit conceited. I don't say that I was inspired by myself because that's not really like the way I mean it. But in the sense that I, I was quite self motivated, it was something that I enjoyed doing. And so that I, I mean, there were people that I thought were good, but there's nobody that I necessarily wanted to to be like. If that makes sense, it was sort of just like I enjoy this, and I will just see. I'll see where this goes. And now I'm here. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's, that's that, and, and, and that's what it's all about is that journey. So. So you went, so you did the whole school college and it was like, okay, Mm. this is bubbling away. But then you went to a theatre school in London. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I was, I mean, I was preparing for that since I was about 14. Okay. That's sort of when I made that decision that I was like, this is what I'm going to do. And I went, I was fortunate to go to a really good dance school back home, um, which is where my sister was before I was there. Um, Which I guess is kind of how you can say I got into it. 
Um, and like, yeah, so they prepped me for years, and then I went off to drama school. Right. Okay. And then what sort of and what did you learn at drama school, theatre school? Was it different styles of theatre, and was it all aspects of direction? And it writing? was literally everything. Right. Um, the only thing they did teach you was how to be a drag queen. Right. Um, <laughs> they left that bit out. They left that bit out. Okay. Right. So I did have to teach myself all of that. But no, I mean, but were you actually then being taught quite? Uh, masculine roles or masculine yeah, stuff. Yeah, well, this is one of the things that I've loved about getting into drag is yeah. that as like a young gay man, you're told like camp is not good. Yeah. And then when I thought oh, I'm going to go to drama school, there'll be homos everywhere. It's going to be great. <laughs> and you get there, and they're like, yeah, you can be be gay, you just can't be camp. And I'm like, balls. Really? Oh, well, that's me. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. um, so who's saying that then? And just generally, the legs like, don't be. Obviously, you can in, be who in you your, want. You can be who you want in your normal life, but as soon as you have to walk into a room, you have to like butch it up. And I was just after oh, a while, right. I was like. Like, that's fine like, I can do it but yeah. you might not believe it but uh, I can do it but are they saying that because it could affect a role yeah so don't if you're going to audition don't go yeah but also don't be too camp in front of like casting directors ever because then they might not be able to see you in a different way and all really? that yeah right. so for me it was then when I started doing drag it's like I took all this campness that is yeah. clearly not I would say I would say bubbling near the surface on the surface yeah yeah um, and and then now people like applaud you for it yeah. so it's sort of taking those things that you spent your whole life hating about yourself yeah. and sort of flipping them on their head for me anyway yeah, flipping sure, them on his head sure. and being like just like releasing all the, all this crap yeah because it is a, because it's a, it's a build up isn't it of, of the look of the wig or the dresses or whatever mm. so um, and so and so where did Poppycock come from and where we, and how did you get her name and where did that start? Um, so her name, uh, so in it's, so it's one word, Poppycock. In yeah. in old English, it means nonsense. Okay, right, nice. Oh, um, or rubbish, okay. but I, I prefer nonsense. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so it means nonsense. It's okay. so um, uh, like if you watch like really old-fashioned comedies, you'll yes. find them going, "Oh, absolute Poppycock." Because, yeah, of course. so that's where that comes from. Um, so that's why, yeah, some people think it's two words, and I'm like, no, it's not a girl's name and a penis. It's, <laughs> I mean, it is that, but it, for, it is one. It is a word. It's a, well, but also it's not. It, it's it's not the traditional. Uh, I mean, we were talking earlier saying, oh well, you know, what do I what do I call you out? You're a drag queen, but the, the name's actually very non-traditional because a lot of drag names tend to be innuendo based or something like that so yeah. probably I like it in that way that it is it is completely yeah. different I mean the innuendo is certainly there well, it's not really even innuendo it's just people like it's got cock in it but, yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah. but it's that's not quite yeah like you say that's not where it's derived yeah, of course, um, of course. and I kind of like that I think that people especially with everything that goes on these days people just want to go and watch some nonsense for an hour yes yes and um, that's what I'm here for. And do you think? And then do you think the act is slightly based around? Because uh, some, uh, as they say, some queens are, are comedy queens. They'll just strictly do jokes. You'll have your singing queens that sort of are belting out the big show tunes. So is Poppycock a mix? Do you think of lots of different stuff going on? Um, yeah, I mean she's developing all the time because I've only been doing this for like seven months. Now. Seven months. You've seven. only been doing it seven yeah. months. And when I've seen you perform, I'm like. Oh Christ! She's been doing it fucking <laughs> years. <laughs> I'm never gonna be and so seven months. So that's still so in sort of yeah. drag performance. That's still very young. Yeah, so. very young. So she's like, and I'm still learning so much. Like, there's so much to learn. And um, but so I mean, she she is a singer probably more than anything because that's the thing I find easiest. Yeah, and seems to people seem to enjoy. Um, I, she does a lot of dancing now. That's sort of something that because when, when people realise they could dance, they're like, "Why don't you dance all the time?" I'm like, "Well, because I can't dance like that and sing like that because yeah. <laughs> I'll die." <laughs> um, so but I'm working in that in, and the comedy's coming. Like yeah. with with working crowds and stuff, it's. Um, no one can teach you that. Like you're so funny when I watched you at Dragon. Drag oh, well, thank you. No, but you're hilarious, so. and I just I'm not that funny. So, um, oh, I think everybody's got their own little take yeah, on things. So but so like, so I just um, I just try and I actually kind of make a bit of a tit of myself on stage now. I just make it absolute nonsense. I say whatever comes out of my mouth. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what? But the how long did it take the scene? To, to develop and, come, and then the lessons I'm starting to learn myself it's very difficult yeah. and you have to be really patient very so good. where did that come from? 
Um, I don't know. Well, apparently, according to my my mum, bless her, I was singing about the same time as I was talking. Oh really? Uh, yeah. Well, I, well when, we, when I was three, and we went to Scotland. Apparently, I sang a song the entire drive there <laughs> that had no chorus, uh, just a series of verses, and just kept asking them to join in. <laughs> um, so I've been singing since I was yeah tiny. Um, and then when I went to drama school. Yeah, the, uh, the class I ended up in because they split you into classes in your second year right um, was focused on singing so I was doing like hours and hours and hours of singing I was doing like six hours of operetta a week uh, really yeah so it was quite rigorous training that's a lot that's a, that, so that's a lot of breath exercise or they have breath yeah. control um, and operetta obviously op- that's, so that's a discipline in itself yeah exactly how, how, how was well, that to it was tricky because I mean like singing I think people don't realise this sometimes is singing is literally like a sport because you're basically training muscles, yeah. really small muscles inside your larynx um, and the muscles around your larynx. And then also, the people don't realise that it take you use all the muscles down your back and like even like your you know in your in your stomach and all that kind of stuff. So you're literally training your muscles to, to do a very specific job. Wow. Okay. Um, so it, it's hard, but it's once you get it, you're like it's really in your body, which is why I can't wear corsets. On right, stage, oh, right, okay. which is why I'm not allowed to gain anyway. Oh, um, really? I can wear waist cinches on stage, right. but because, um, especially in the opera stuff, you're trained to breathe in your stomach. Right. And if you wear a corset, the only place you can breathe is up, and I can't <laughs> sing like that. I just can't. I think it's because it's been drilled into me really? so much. I just, I can't. So that gives us an idea of actual big diva opera singers, and um, because they were always wearing tight bodice and things. I have like no idea how they did it. Do do I don't know the bonkers. They're mad. So, so really, so you've had to develop sort of costumes that allow you're not yeah, constricted absolutely I think because especially with a lot of the stuff I, like, I remember I'd forgotten why I didn't wear corsets for a while <laughs> I was like why don't I wear corsets and then uh, um, one venue would see me in, the, in this corset outfit they're like can you can you wear that because I'd worn it for like one number I did in a competition and um, I was like yeah sure and I had to do an hour long show and I got to about the third number I went oh I've remembered why I don't do this and I literally struggled the entire show oh, wow. because I mean, for one or two numbers, it's okay. Yeah. But for like an entire show, it's really hard to sustain. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's my own problem. <laughs> <laughs> but it's part of, I say, the drag journey and working out what works oh, and costumes. Completely. Costume. And this is so. And so, so singing is a big aspect. The dancing. And what about the look now? With the, 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 the because sometimes you have very green. Are you, are you always in the colour green for me? Yeah, it has to be green and blue are, are my safe colours. Right, okay. Um, well, I think it's because I'm a, cause I'm a natural redhead, yeah. I've been, and that's quite a big part of my identity as a, as a yeah. person throughout my whole life. So she, Poppy's become a, a flaming redhead as well. Right. She seems to always have massive hair. Okay. Um, and I think green and blue are just like safe colours. Um, pink I can do sometimes, but right. it just, it doesn't, I don't, maybe it's my complexion. I'm a bit pasty, so the pink sometimes washes me out a bit. Okay. Um, but yeah, green and blue. Um, I try and stick away from like leprechaun green because of the ginger hair. Right, okay. So um, I thought there was an Irish connection because it was like, uh, she was wearing yeah. green all the time and red, and I thought, oh, there must be. Yeah, I'm know. like so southern. <laughs> um, my mum's Welsh, but that's oh, about right. as exciting as it gets. There we go. So like, I've got um, that completely wrong. Right yeah. So. Oh no. I, no. It's, but I mean, it's, I I kind of like that people people look at my. I mean, people talk about my aesthetic quite a lot with me sometimes, and they all have very different interpretations of what it's like, and yeah. I really enjoy that. Yeah. Um, I really I really enjoy that they. Um, see different things okay. especially as I just put on I'm like well they're like why did you wear it I'm like because it looks nice <laughs> <laughs> and they're like oh is it not because you were doing this I was like let's go with that sure <laughs> I was inspired by this of course so let, no, no I want to go back to you and do have a sip of your hot chocolate because I've realised <laughs> I've just bought you this drink and I've done this with other interviews but I'm not drilling you so much on the questions you don't get a chance to actually have it's a what, sip I'm the slowest drinker in the world so anyway so don't let it go cold that's what I'm saying so I'm, <laughs> and I'm seriously trying to drink mine but well, let's go back to your first performance mm. and what that was like and because that's again total uncharted territory and where was it? So it was at Halfway to Heaven. And where's that? Um, it's in London. It's on okay. the Strand. Um, it's it was for Drag Idol this year. Right. So Drag Idol, where we met this year, that was my first ever foray wow, into drag. And you were and you almost got through to the final. Yeah, it was, was a bit bonkers, which was incredible. That yeah. you only just. I think when we met was my fifth 
performance wow. ever. Um, but I mean, the, di- the difference between my first performance and my second performance is quite vast. So what's the first performance um, so like? The, Take so us the back to that. one, um, it was bizarre. I didn't know what to do. I was just like, what am I doing? What am I, <laughs> I going to do? So then I took a song that I've been singing for ages, which is Alone by Heart. Uh, which is one of my favourite songs ever. Which one's that? Sorry, th- um, and so Celine Dion covered it. Oh, right. Um, okay. as, uh, uh, um, I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to sing no, right no, now. No, no. <laughs> well, well p- if you're listening, then people will know they can go yeah, away. Yeah, alone by heart. Alone. Classic. Alone. Um, it's a really cool not, song. Not alone. Da, 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 da. Like an 80s classic. Yeah, it's like yes. an 80s. Yeah, yeah. Ba, da, 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 da. Yes, that one. Right, that fine. one. Yeah. I'm, I'm, and that's fine. I grew up in the 80s. I know yeah, which one you said. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of music I grew up with anyway. Right. Um, and then, because I have a really strong falsetto, um, uh, which is, I, I sang it when I did um, Wild Cards. Right, the right, yes, yes, of course. Um, and, uh, and then the second one, I decided I was going to do I want to dance with somebody by Whitney Houston. Right. And I just, I've never sung both those songs back to back before. Yeah, yeah. Separately, I can sing them great. Right. But back to back, by the time I got to the end of the Whitney Houston number, I was like dying. I was like, <laughs> this isn't going to happen. And um, it so wasn't this, great. It wasn't, so this, so you'd, 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 so the first gig was, well, I'll do these two I'll big shows. Songs, songs. And then we'll just sort of see what they, I was, I don't know, I didn't. I think I did also didn't kind of know where I wanted to go artistically sure. in terms of... Uh, and what was the outfit? What were you wearing? So I was wearing um, this black and white leotard with... Uh, well, like it was black with, like, white piping and then these amazing, like, 70s black and white striped flares, like, right. skin tight and then flared yeah. out with them um, huge red sparkly shoes, like my big wig yeah, with yeah. a big red bow. Um, yeah, it's kind of like the... He- it was... It's kind of a silhouette I've kind of gone back to now a little bit because yeah. it's easy to dance in. Yes. Although I was wearing a very tight corset that day, which we also quickly learned isn't, isn't happening. Isn't happening um, so, I mean, it was fine. It wasn't bad. Yeah. Um, I actually did fairly well in terms, from what I've heard, in terms of like the evening. I wasn't the worst there. So, um, and I was the only virgin, as to so to speak, that was there. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's like... Oh, it's like losing your virginity. It's awkward, and you've got to ha- it's got to happen to get to the good stuff. You've got to absolutely to um, work it out. So. Uh, and what yeah. did the judges say? Did, did you get critiqued? Yeah, we yeah. got critiqued, and they were really fair. They were really lovely, and actually, none of them realised it was my first time. And I wow. saw it afterwards. They're like, "Oh, we would have been a little bit nicer if we'd known that." Oh, and I was right. like, "Well, no, it was my first time, but it was fine." And they they, they mentioned about like um, context and like why I was singing the songs, and like maybe there should be more like of a, in the pattern. There should be like a clear movement. Into my next song mm-hmm. which I completely understand but like I mean so which I then took that as a huge um, thing to work on and that's when I developed my stalker act <laughs> which is what I did next at the Admiral Duncan which is what um, that's what one of the my favourite acts and um and what's the stalker act? So it starts with Alone because I realised actually that's quite a creepy song yes, when you think yes. about it. So it started with these like, it was ridiculous. It starts, I love it though. It starts with this big thunderclap and a psycho theme tune and I, and I walk on and you think that I walk on as if like I'm really scared and then there's another thunderclap and I switch and you suddenly realise that I'm the bad guy. Right, nice. Um, and then I sing Alone about basically wanting to like be with this guy. Um... And then I did, I mean, I don't really lip sync much, but then I did a lip sync of Dead Girl Walking from Heather's, and there's like blood comes up my mouth as a costume change and a yes, dance break. Yes, yes, I remember, yes. Yeah. It was all, because I was like, whoa, she's really, there's, there's fake blood here, you were doing all sorts. And yeah. It's a real theatrical show, yeah. which I think is what it should be about. Sometimes. Yeah, it was really good fun. And like, I've, brilliant. I've, I've actually, I've decided I'm going to start singing that song, but I, I don't know if I'm ever going to sing the song with the blood at the same right. time, yeah. because I just don't know if I could <laughs> sing the song with fake blood pouring out my mouth I just don't know if that would be a good choice but we'll see we'll see um, and then that sort of developed again and then and this by the was, time was this the second performance this was my second performance right because right. then that that act then developed further when you mm. saw it because I opened with Every Breath You Take yeah yeah um, and because um, that's also another really good stalk song <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah so I mean and then that that did really well for me and I did a whole Little Mermaid inspired bit where I started yeah. Ur- as Ursula then right. turned into the Little Mermaid and then signed to Cry Gravity and then did the Can Can right yes yeah. natural natural of natural. course yeah. um it was all part of it. <laughs> and how did you feel when you got to the end of your second performance? Did you feel okay? I'm turning the corner. I kind of know where I'm going. Yeah, or- it was. It was. It was. I've, I'd sort of found like a groove almost, and I sort of just keep riding that 
that group and also I think it's because I had a performance that went really well I was really happy with it was actually the confidence it gave me more than anything yeah. even if I'm going to do something really basic like in my hour shows I'm not going to do an hour of being a stalker <laughs> right. you know because that'll be boring after a while and, like, and it's one note but so whereas now I just like just do songs and we have a laugh and I'll mess around with the audience yeah. but it's now it's that confidence I think that that performance gave me okay yeah that, that I was like oh I can do this I am good at this sure. I just need to make sure I'm applying myself absolutely in the right way and then where did you win your heat I won an admiral you won an admiral brilliant yeah, and what was that like when you so this is your third performance fourth? second performance second performance well second performance I won my heat yeah. third performance I won third performance I won the venue wow, wow. Uh, which is really cool and to explain to people once you win the venue you're then selected to go through to like a semi-final. Yeah. So where was your semi-final? The RVT, uh, which is Royal the Fox Tavern. Royal Fox Tavern in London. So that and that's a real historical, famous yeah, drag. Right? So how was, was it? Scary. How scary was that? Well, because the, the stage there is so different to the ones I've been at before. And like as much as I, you know, I'm I, as a performer before that, I've taught I toured Italy in like massive arenas and stuff. So I'm used to like Whoa, being. Hang a, on a minute. I've toured Italy in massive arenas. So what was this? You oh, did? I did flash dance in Italy. Um, oh right, which just, is cool. Just, 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 that was when I was a, that's like as a boy. That's fine. So when did you? So this was when you were with drama school, was it? Was it? Just literally as soon as I graduated. So you went into a full production show of flash dance. Mm. Wow. And what that's was your part? I was Jimmy. Right, okay. Um, I mean, it was a bit weird. We didn't realise until we got there that it was mostly schools that were going to be coming to watch us. We were, but these theatres were incredible. Oh, this is, but this is like... It was in English, so it was basically just kids, like schools everywhere being yeah. like, hi, we want to learn English, we're going to come watch the show. And we're going to come watch Flash Dance. Yeah, quite a terrible musical. But, but it, and and who, who, I, I, I vaguely remember, I know the film, but I can't remember. So Jimmy is... He's so the, Jimmy's not in the film, really. Right. Is it, wait, the musical is so different to the film. Um, right, okay. So they've kind of taken... And Flash Cash. Dance, sorry, Flash Dance is with... What a feeling. What a feeling. Right, right, where, okay. where she has the, she's on the chair and she has the water. Right, and it's it's uh, what's the actor's name? Uh, oh, I can't remember. That. Oh God, I should, this, is, <laughs> this is my job now. Uh, it's he was in Tremors. It's going to come to Kevin Bacon. Oh so, no, Kevin Bacon was Footloose. Footloose. See, I'm so. I mean, another eighties musical yeah, about this, dancing. So, it is. You can <laughs> understand why. Is this was so? Flash dance was don't put baby in the corner. No, that was break. Uh, that was dirty dancing. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> It's all oh. clearly very memorable films. For you. Yeah, it all <laughs> revolves. In, God, that was so. There was Flash Dance, Footloose, Dirty Dancing. Oh, There's I'm, probably I'm, more. There's Fame. You've got. There was just such a, all of these. Diff- so you were doing Footloose, Flash Dance, Flash Dance. God, sorry. Joy, it's all right. <laughs> flash Dance. Yeah. So, and um, but you were touring a ring. And how many? And um, the people? biggest one we did was two and a half thousand. Oh my lord. So, so like I'm so I'm used I've, I'm used to doing that that but the because the RVT obviously is not that big but it the stage is so high above the crowd. Yeah, because it's these so are bigger really. and and what's that like performing to when you're doing just to say to a small crowd but to do two and a half thousand so you've it's really much got easier. Really? Oh it's so much easier. Um because you can't see anyone right. and also because in those times I'm doing a show I'm doing a script yes. so what I'm doing is scripted I, I, I don't deviate from mm. what I'm doing yeah. whereas obviously when you're doing like um, drag art performances or like mm. cabaret performances it's very much like you work with the crowd and you yes. see what the crowd do and even though you might have like a vague script you also will bounce off what yeah. what they are enjoying so and you can always see them yeah, yeah, yeah. so it is, it is scarier but for me it was that at the at the Admiral Duncan and halfway to heaven, you're so close to the crowd. Yes. Which is for for a cabaret, I think, a really nice thing. Yeah. Because it really feels like you can interact. So I'd gone from that and like sort of like found my groove a bit and been yeah. like, oh, and then I went to the RVT where you're like a meter and a half above the crowd. Yeah. And like you can't really interact with them in in the yeah. same way. Yes. I mean, you can, but I think you just have to have a lot more confidence, which I don't have. Yeah. Okay. Um. And I also forgot like half my outfit and was having a huge stress about that because it was like a it was a reveal outfit and I'd right. forgotten it had to like fashion and well, it looked it was terrible. But um but yeah, so for me it was that it was really difficult to go from And it's the prestige of being at the uh, uh, D- the R V T, the Voxel yeah. Tablet. And so um how did that go? Was it was alright. Yeah. It went pretty well. Um it didn't go perfectly. But you got you so did you get 
Do, so you didn't win the semi? No, I didn't win the semi. Vivian Lindsay won the semi. So that was Vivian Lindsay. And then Felix Lafree got the runner up. Right, okay. So he got the wild card. Right. Okay. So that's how, because you run up to Victoria Pierce Scone. Yes, yes. Um, and so that's how you guys got to the, the, that's to the wild card. But then people like me, Pat Crutcher, well, me and Pat Crutcher got to semi finals and they asked us to come back. Right. And then brilliant. Baby Brew hadn't got to a semi final, but they asked her to come back anyway because yeah, they sure. liked her. She's yeah. fab. She's really, very, very good. Yeah. Um, and so that's how I ended up there, back at the Emerald Duncan, which is why they had to get rid of all the judges last minute. Did you know that? No. So they were meant to have the original like, Admiral Duncan judges, right. but because that was my venue, right. and all those judges had been judging me the, like, oh, and, and chosen me, they were like, right. that's a little bit biased, so oh, they had to literally... Oh, really? They had to draft a they new one. They dropped them all. Other than Dave Cross, they dropped them all. Really? Oh, right. So, yeah. Well, that's very good. It's honoured. That it's, 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 I was like, thanks. I was like, I didn't realise it was that much of a big deal, but okay. <laughs> um... Yeah, so, and I wish so, they'd been there though I would have won and you would have <laughs> so uh, and then so that so then that got you through to the wild card final yeah that that performance mm. then and then that was the end of my journey oh but but what sure. but you but the journey continues yeah because um, as you say you're or as I say you're relentlessly busy and gigging now you still have a, a job at the moment full time job yes, I do. but you're hoping to yeah it's, you would like to obviously do it full time I'd think? love to I think it's certainly a possibility I think the more I'm getting busier and busier and it's kind of finding I'm going through, I think I'm going through that period where it's like I'm not doing enough to like do it full time yeah but it, but I'm still I'm just so dead because I'm doing my full time job at the same time it's like I need like another two gigs a week and then I'll be fine yeah, yeah. but it's that like ooh rent it, it is it's, the, it's very difficult yeah. and what, what do you find when you started to how far you're down the track now what would you say if you could say to yourself at the beginning oh do this do that that would be a, a, just just by learning what your trade as it were is there anything that you've now gone ah right don't do that song at the beginning or um, do you know what there, there isn't much I tell myself not because I think what I've done is brilliant at mm. all but because I think actually the journey I've had has mm. been really useful yeah. and I think me learning the things I've learned when I've learned them yeah. has been quite good yeah. and I'm sort of I think I don't think there's anything I would I mean obviously there are performances where, where I'd go like that was horrendous and I'd probably warn myself beforehand like, but I don't think really there's anything that I would change because if for example I asked I told myself to change that first performance I wouldn't have got those that feedback which might mean that I didn't yeah. move my yeah. act in the direction yeah. I moved it so I don't think I would no no in fact because you I suppose you learn by your mistakes and you yeah. need to go through that process yeah I think especially when you go to drama school you're constantly used to being criticised and like, yes. like so, so for me I think it's always been such a process of learning and that yeah. you just you just keep learning and you'll learn, discover things as you go along and song choices as well how do you pick your songs and are you looking at new ones and how do you um, keep that fresh and what do you like so I just pick songs I like to sing okay <laughs> um because um, I don't know I, because I really enjoy singing so I don't like singing songs I don't like to sing right okay. um, which is why I don't tend to do a lot of contemporary like really contemporary stuff I'm, I'm trying right. I'm going to try and put some more really contemporary stuff in but most of it is just nonsense yeah so I just don't I don't really connect with it and also I don't and I think if I don't connect with it that means the audience won't yeah you know and especially because they're not at a club they're yes. not. They're not there just dancing to the latest track. They're. I mean, they can absolutely ignore me and dance yeah, to whatever yeah. I'm singing. That's fine. Yeah. But that's what. Not why I'm, the majority of people go to drag shows. Yeah. So I kind of. What I need to do needs to be engaging. Yeah. Um. And a song that only has like three lyrics in it isn't really engaging. Yeah. Sure. Um. I love a good show tune. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Um, but then that's what a lot of these places they do like. And yeah. But then you could be on a bill with other queens and well you know people uh, another queen will do another style of yeah. song so I think it's yeah. being true to yourself uh, yeah I it? do a lot of like 80s rock yeah. uh, glam rock kind of stuff I just I really enjoy that because oh, I like songs that are written for singers yeah yeah you I know and I think that's because also that's the kind of music I listen to yeah because I love listening to a voice I think it's so mm. impressive um well I've got to say I'm not a massive fan of The Greatest Showman I know it's been a phenomenal film this week, but but it, because for me, it's it's there's more nostalgia. So you, I, I've already been trying to sing Hearts today. I'm probably going to go yeah. back and listen to it again because it's just a memorable tune for me. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, that's what. I, and I, I think especially 
people like to listen to songs and they go, oh, I haven't heard that song in a while. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's the kind of stuff I like to do. Um, anything with a theatrical edge to yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of no, that's, yeah, I think how that's I do wonderful. it. And I just, I just try and learn songs as and when I can. I yeah. hate doing it. It's yeah. so boring. So I know. It, but it's a necessary evil. You have to do it. You have to do um, it. Oh, and so, and finally, listen. Thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you for having and, me. And um, one of the last questions I'll always ask is, who do you think I should have on the show next or in a future episode? Who do you think I should track down? Uh, she's really funny and really I love her to pieces. Uh, she's called Flick de Bean. Right. <laughs> flick de Bean. Flick de Bean. Like Flick de Bean. Flick de Bean. I love the name. Oh. They just they. And 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 she's a London queen. She's a London queen. Um, her act is mostly like Essexy, right. but she's just hilarious. Hilarious. Like, I, she's just brilliant. Um, I actually met her at the semi-finals okay. at the RBT, and we've sort of stayed in contact. And we're actually hosting a show together in December yeah. at the Eagle in Vauxhall, which will be really good fun. Oh, when you oh, okay? I'll, I'll, if I'm down in London, I'll try and get over and see. Oh you yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah, so I mean, there's lots of stuff going, but she's just brilliant. She's Flick hilarious. Brilliant. That's brilliant. brilliant. Well, listen, Bobby Cock, thank you very much for coming on the Funny Peculiar Podcast. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to Funny Peculiar. Tune in next week. More great guests. <laughs>